Okay, we got that part all programmed up. So now it's time to move on to the next step. Step number five. Step number five is setting your part zero positions. Now if you remember, way back in step one, we made some decisions. We decided that the x, y, zero position for programming this part was going to be at the center of this circular pocket. And I told you that I had a fixture plate machined up ahead of time that had the same bolt hole pattern as our part. This was so that when we're done machining the, the bolt hole circle, I can then bolt the stock down to the fixture plate and remove the clamps, which will then allow me to machine the perimeter of the part. Well, we need to get our program lined up with the fixture plate. So, I need to have the XY0 position of the DRO line up with the circular pocket in my fixture plate. Let me go show you how that's done. The best way to set part zero positions on a centroid is using the optional centroid touch probe. The touch probe will automatically find and set the center points of circular pockets, edges, inside corners, outside corners. It's simply the fastest, best way to set a part zero position. If you don't have a centroid touch probe, you'll have to use the old time-consuming traditional tools for setting your part zero positions. Whether you use the automatic touch probe or an old-fashioned center finder to set your part zero positions, we'll be using the same part setup menu in the control. To get to the part setup menu from the main screen of the control, press F1 setup, F1 part. This is the part setup menu, and we can use this screen right here to set our X, Y, and Z zero positions using any method. So no matter if we're using the automatic touch probe, or an edge finder, or a center finder, or even just positioning the tool to a position and setting zeros, we can do that right here with this screen. The X axis comes up first. It wants us to set, a, set the zero positions for the X first. Well, if I needed to set for another axis, I would push the F1 next axis button, and it would switch to the next axis. Now you see it's on Y, now it's on Z, and now we're back to X. Well, the graphic shows an edge finder here. We could use this screen to use an edge finder and set a zero position on an edge, whether it be the left or the right-hand side of the block. But in our case, we're setting a zero position in the center of a circular pocket. So what we need to do is move the cursor over here to the approach from setting and use the space bar to change that to center. There's three choices here, center, right, and left. Well, the left and right are used for when you're touching off with an edge finder. We're not doing that. We're using a center finder. So we're going to leave this on center. And all we have to do then, if we're setting this with the probe, is hit the F5 probe button and pick bore. There's a whole bunch of choices of common shapes that you can probe right here. Bores, bosses, slots, webs, inside corners, outside corners, or one axis. We're going to probe a bore, so I'm going to hit F1 and follow the instructions. All I need to do is position the probe tip which within the bore, just like the instructions say, and press cycle start. Okay, the probe's found the center of the circular pocket, and it's waiting for us to set the position. I could type in any number I wanted right here. If I needed to call the center of that circular pocket something else other than 0, 0, that's where you type this number in right here, the part position. Well, we did want it to be set to zero, so I'm going to leave the X zero part position set where it's at. The edge finder diameter doesn't matter since we're setting a center. I can just leave that alone. And I want to make sure that I have the approach from set to center. And when I hit the F10 set button right now, it's going to zero out the X axis. Now the probe's still sitting in the center of the circular pocket, so all I have to do is hit the F1 next axis button to switch to Y for the Y axis. Make sure the part position reads zero. Make sure the approach from reads center. I'm going to change that to center and hit F10. There we go. We just got done zeroing out our X and Y zero position with the probe sitting in the center of the circular pocket. You would basically do the same thing with the center finder. You would center find out using the jog buttons. You would get the center finder set perfectly in the center of the circular pocket and then use the approach from center feature here and make sure it's set to zero and hit F10. It's just the probe's a lot faster. You don't have to spend all the time fiddling with the center finder. Now to set Z, I'm going to hit F1 next axis. And this is a little different. What we're going to do is come down and touch off the top of the part, but we're going to use a piece of paper which is about two thousandths of an inch thick. So I'm going to type in two thousandths for the part position. In other words, the tool 
is not really touching the top of the workpiece, it's touching a piece of paper which is two thousandths above it. So I'm typing in two thousandths, that's the position that we're touching. And this is very important. Remember I said you can use any tool in the tool library to set your Z0 position. Well, you can use any tool that's in there, just like I said, but when you're setting the position, you have to tell the control right now what tool number you're using. Well, we just happened to be using tool 1 because that was the first one in our program. So I'm typed in 1 and I hit set. There we go. We just zeroed out our Z0 position. And again, Z is reading two thousandths above zero because that's the, the thickness of the piece of paper between the tool and the zero position. All right, we got our XYZ zero position set. Now it's time to go machine the part.